Hello, and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And on today's show, we have Dr. Tom of Dapper Effects out of New York. Welcome, Tom. That's right. You're listening to BizQuick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. BizQuick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, all, all things aside, you know, it's been a, it's been a difficult year for all of us. Um, but, you know, every single day, just working hard, plugging along, doing what I can do to be the best person I could possibly be um, with uh, everything, like, you know, all things aside, you know, it's, it's been tough, but, you know, moving forward. Yep. We can definitely appreciate that. Um, this year has been interesting for sure. Um, so tell us a little bit about Dapper Effects. Sure. Yeah. So Dapper Effects was founded uh, by myself, my my brother, and a close friend. We founded it about, uh, it feels like 10 years, but almost about five years ago uh, because the three of us, um, well, number one, obviously my brother is one of my, he's my best friend. And Mike, our other friend came in uh, as a, as a, as a family friend and became a close friend with us. And we all had converged one year, actually it was at a uh, conference. We were at a walking dead conference. Um, the Walker, I think it was called walking Walker. I forget back what it's called. Um, and the three of us just kind of sat down and we were having lunch and we're starting to vibe on the, the, just the whole culture of where the state of what, what, marketing and businesses uh, out there for men, how it's, um, it's really been, men have been portrayed in a, in a, uh, in a way that we feel is not, um, you know, the values have changed so much over the years. And we, we've just been, we were starting to talk and vibe about how um, we want to put something together that would really bring values out for men and how, uh, what we felt, you know, men should stand for. Uh, because there's a lot of marketing out there that kind of makes light of men or makes jokes of men. And um, we wanted to build a brand that could, man could stand, men could stand behind and give them confidence, give them swagger, help them feel, you know, related to, you know, just this, this world that's um, I think really changing uh, so much what it means to be a man today, which, you know, I, you know, in some uh, opinions that, that, that's fine. It's everybody has their opinion, but for us, we want to really uh, dive in and build a brand that, uh, that men could stand behind. So um, yeah, it started, it started as honestly just a conversation being at a, a out of a conversation of a group of good friends uh, that where we want to build a brand that would help men. And we started talking about products and we, we had built a business with some products where we were selling on Amazon and over the years, that kind of just has evolved to what you see now as dapperfx.com, where we have uh, multiple different types of products. We have a lot of content that we put out. Um, there's blog posts, there's podcasts, there's um, the, the brand is also used as a conduit to empower uh, the barber and um, beautician community. So it's been, it's been a great journey. Uh, it's, it's something that the three of us, it's really a passion project. It's, it's something that we um, you know, we take very seriously with the branding of it. We don't, we're not trying to build something very quickly. We know it's going to be a, a slow and long-term build for us. Um, and, and that's kind of how, you know, how Dapper Effects was born. That's, that's fascinating. I'm, I, I want to dig a little, dig into a little bit the, um, the comments that you made about how, you know, either men are portrayed or how, things have changed. I can't, I apologize. I don't remember your exact sure. words that you use, but what I'm curious about is, so on Instagram, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, I'm pretty, I feel like everybody knows him at this point, Ian Smith from Atlas gym in um, New Jersey, right? He's fighting the huge lawsuit against the state government because of the, 
um, because of COVID and they're just levying all these fines against him. But he recently had a post and he's, I think he's made it several, several times now about how it's so uncommon for men to really be men anymore in our society. Like it's, it's as if we're, they're more focused on being, like they're not, they're not strong like they used to be in the, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, where it was really cool to be manly. Like that's no longer acceptable is kind of the, um, the direction that he was going with that post. And I'm curious if that's, if that's what you mean by the way that men are portrayed now and what's happening in society. Is that the direction you were going? Yeah. I'm, and I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's definitely one way to put it. It's not for, for dapper effects. It's not so much, um, just you know the strength aspect but more of um i would say character ter- as well too so we we have something a, a mantra that we stand by at dapper effects we call it the four c's so we call it character courage charity chivalry um it's just about you know number one standing up for what you believe in and i think you know if you want to use that example of ian i think that's a great example it's it's is a man who has a business that's you know under attack and is standing up for what he believes in and he's not he's not backing down so i think that's a, an important aspect um you know having the courage too so you have and having the courage to stand up for that and then character too just living certain values uh out in society where you know you're respected you're um you carry yourself a certain way um you're, you're tempered in your thought you're tempered in your word when you're speaking to to one another um, spreading positivity, right? Uh, that's, you know, we talk about that, you know, as well. It's, it's being the best person you could possibly be in the way that you carry yourself in your relationships, how you dress, uh, how you organize yourself. We, we talk re- very deeply about that. It's, it's so important that, um, you know, if your life is a mess at home, you know, you're going to be a mess possibly uh, out in the world too. And I, I think for us, it's, it's so important to, that's what we sell products, you know, that, that help organize men and, uh, everything that we do, it, it kind of stems from that idea of having character, having courage, having ch- you know, sh- charity, being chivalrous uh, in your community, in your, f- in your family, with your friends, with stranger, right? So um, I think, you know, when we talk about Ian, I, I know his story too. I think that's definitely uh, someone who is standing up for, right, for his business uh, in, in a strong way. And I, I would say, you know, in terms of dapper effects, he would definitely fall under uh, that category. Um, we don't necessarily, you know, obviously he's a, a, a gym owner. He, the, his physical appearance is more of one that talks of strength physically and, and someone that works out. That's not really like our imaging with dapper effects. Um, but that, that mindset that he has absolutely is, is something that I would agree with. And that's kind of what we're portraying as well. Yeah. And that would just for clarification, his post, well, I know, you know, he's a gym owner and he's, you know, strong and muscles and he does a lot of like fitness posts as well. That post was really about those, those, um, the character, the courage, the chivalry and the charity that, that well, was what he was speaking of. It's, was, it's not, it's not sexy, right. To talk about like masculinity no. anymore. It's, um, you know, we, we, we even had a, we had a podcast that we were talking about how the, the pandemic can almost feel emasculating for many men because, um, Many men feel like they, they can't go out to their job. They can't go out and provide for their family. They, um, they can't go out and, and go to the gym and work on their body, which is you know, a big thing for, for, for many men. So um, it's, it's, it's like we're not allowed to talk about it anymore. It's this thing that is just kind of like out in the ether and we can't be strong men. We can't be, you know, we have to be submissive. You know, culture in a way sometimes makes a point that men have to be submissive in a way. Um, and that's not to say that uh, women can't be strong, but it's just that there definitely is this, this changing of guard, so to speak, of how men are viewed in society. Um, so we're trying to be that, that just bastion of strength for, for men out there. Yeah, and you bring up, uh, I mean, so many good points just in general of being a man. I don't know why Julie gets to do all the talking right now. And that's not a man and woman thing. It's like, I've got so many questions over here. She, <laughs> she's just taken over. Um, but uh, <clears throat> the like you're talking about emasculating, like that's almost like a bad word to say because right. like, nowadays, like, like, and it's to say that I'm strong doesn't mean that women can't be strong, but we're, we live in such a like, like polarizing world right now that if I say that I want to be strong and that like, I want to talk about manly things, 
that means that everything else is less than that, you know? Right. And that's, that's something that's frustrating from, you know, my standpoint, because I like doing those manly type things, you know, whether it's changing a tire or, you know, working on my house or whatever. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that I just think that, like you said, there we're for whatever reason trying to work out of our society right now. Um, but I was, so I was on your website and I was checking out all this stuff. I love the organizational part of it. That's something that, um, like I've never seen, I'm, you know, I've got a beard. I, you know, check out some of the, you know, here's the, this website that sells beard oil or, or whatever, but I hadn't seen anybody who actually sold organizational type stuff. So can you talk more about that? Yeah. So as we were saying like earlier that it's such a, a big aspect to success in life is how we organize our personal space. And when we organize our, when we say our, our personal space too, that, that that's not only physically our personal space, but our mind too, how we organize our thoughts in our brain, what we allow into our brain, uh, our associations, uh, where we hang out, the music we listen to. And we liked to, you know, through dapper effects have imbued that thought into the physical products that we sell too, where when you leave your house, if you're leaving your house in an organized fashion, number one, you're going to come back in an organized fashion too. You're going to come home. You're going to leave every, all of your personal effects uh, that you carry and you leave them in a, in a very specific spot there. You, there, your, your personal effects take on more meaning too as well. Maybe there's, there's a pair of keys that you have. There's a wallet. Uh, maybe there's chapstick that you carry, whatever that, uh, whatever those few, th few things that you carry, you know, some call them the, uh, the everyday carry. There's a term out there. Um, but you, you start to take more ownership of your effects and you become um, more respected. You know, you respect the things that you own. So it's kind of also through that, that process of getting more in tune with your organization, you respect your things more. Uh, I think just in this consumer society that we live in, it could be very easy to fall into that trap of just like getting something and throwing it away and uh, just finding it 10 years later in the corner of, of your house. Uh, and that generally stems from uh, just over, you know, buying too many things and not organizing when, when you realize there's just a couple of things that are very important to you and knowing where they are, always having them, making sure that they're on you, you know, back and forth, traveling wherever you go. Um, that's why we have that, that travel valet as well, where it, that's something that you can lay flat when you're traveling and you can have it on a nightstand when you're at a hotel and, knowing that when you get back to the hotel, you know, you had a long night, maybe you went out, you had some, you went to a, it was a meeting, right? You had some drinks and, and you would come home, you're all, you want to relax, but you want to make sure everything is perfectly where it's ready to go. So when you leave early 5 a.m. next morning for that early morning meeting that you have all your stuff, you can run out the door and, and you're not late. So I think it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's that, it's the discipline. It's working in discipline through organization, right? We, and we, you know, you mentioned Ian, like a guy like discipline through working out, right? Um, so it's, I think it, it's a big aspect that it comes back to discipline and working that into your, your daily life. Because for us, you know, that's what we want to portray is, um, is a brand that uh, helps you feel successful, helps you feel uh, grounded, helps you feel um, proud too. You know, the product that you bought, obviously you want to buy it from a company that stands for the values that you feel comfortable and you relate to and uh, is out there, you know, uh, no matter at all, at all hours, if you're going to be wearing something or owning something that has a stamp on it with that brand, uh, that that brand is, is, is living by the values that you live by and that the people behind that brand and the organization are living by those values too. They're not just selling you a widget. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, like personally, I, I, it took me, I don't know, four years of living in my house to figure out that, that simple thing of putting something in the same place. Like I'd walk in and I'd throw my wallet, my keys, whatever on the kitchen table. It'd go on the, you know, the nightstand sometimes just wherever. And then finally I just kind of got everything organized and it, right by the front door, there's a bowl, everything goes in the bowl. Um, and I don't think that anybody, like, like, I don't think a lot of people realize how l doing little things like that really can like just help like improve. Cause I, I'm no longer looking for anything in the morning. It's always in the bowl. You know, it's the so. small wins. Yeah. It's, it's the small wins when you're organizing yourself, sometimes uh, getting your life in order, whether it's your organization, whether it's your fitness, it's your body, it's your business, it's your mindset, it's your relationships. It's the little, little wins. And 
we agree with you on that. It's like, that's like for our, our, our products, we feel that that's a, it's a, it's a way to incorporate small wins into your life. Um, there's, there's a thing that I do at home where if I'm, if I'm, maybe it's a week or a month where things are a little bit crazy, work's been crazy and, you know, time hasn't been as much where I maybe let some things slide and maybe the house is a mess. Um, what I like to do is I put one extra thing away every single night. So it's not overwhelming and, and I don't add to that. So it's not like we're adding. So if it, everything else that's new is getting done, but maybe there's one extra thing that gets put away or maybe it's another document that has to be filed that's been sitting on the desk. And then after a week or two, everything kind of gets organized, everything gets, gets processed. And then it's not this overwhelming daunting task when you, you know, you go down into your basement of your home and you're like, Oh my gosh, there's all this stuff that we have to put away. Um, I actually used to do that to my, uh, when I was living at home still, I used to mess with my dad. Like if the garage was disorganized, I'd come, I'd come home and I'd go in the garage and I'd put like one tool away. And like, I remember one, one year he like w- went in and he was like, what the heck? Like, who, who cleaned the garage up? I'm like, I'm like, bro, I've been, <laughs> I've been secretly putting a tool away every night. <laughs> and, he just, and then one day he's like, wow, this, this place is so clean. <laughs> Hey, this is Shea Butler with Shea Butler Knives. Uh, head over to SheaButlerKnives.com and check out our new Rhino and Pursuit folders. And if you use the code SBPACE10, you can get 10% off your choice of Rhino, Ranger, Wilderness, or New Pursuit. Go get them, SheaButlerKnives.com. I want to um, circle back a little bit and talk about more about the brand. Sure. Um, and I'm curious what it's been like to build a brand on something that is, I don't want to say, it's not so much that it's controversial, because um, that's not really the word. It's, it's almost like it's, it's not cool. It's not, it's not. Countercultural. Yeah. And so I'm curious what it's been like for you, what, for building that brand and how you've sort of built awareness and, and gotten engagement and gotten people on board with it when, you know, we live in a world where if you say one wrong thing on social media, you are shut down and many people delete their accounts because they're, they're, they're not going with, you know, the mainstream. They're not just going with the flow. So I'm, I'm curious right. how you've done that. Well, I, I think it comes back to just the way that myself, uh, my brother, my, our other business partner, Mike, the way that we live our lives, um, I'm very big on integrity. I'm very big on respecting other people. I'm very big on thinking before I say something online. Um, And also just, you know, you know, you hear that term, like everybody has like this beautiful presentation of of who they are online. And I agree, like every, nobody wants to put the bad stuff up and I, and I don't, you know, I don't just put the bad stuff up, but also I, I, the stuff that I do put up is who I am as a person, whether it's my, you know, my Instagram or the, the writings through Dapper Effects or the podcast, or even the reason why we, we have certain products that we sell. It's just who I've been crafted as a, how I've lived my life all these years. Um, so I, for us, it's never really, I guess, been a problem because, you know, even, you know, in my other business, right, we said, Dr. Tom, my, my day-to-day business of, of helping people with their hearing, um, when you live your life a certain way and you, you build your business a certain way and you're not looking for that, that quick uh, turnaround, you just start to attract people into your life and your business that are looking for that. So that's, we've never, I've, we've never really had, um, you know, an extreme amount of negativity towards the brand, the people that there were, you know, every so often a post would go out and we would get somebody that did, would disagree and that's fine. They just, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't follow it and they would, they wouldn't buy a product from us. That's fine with us. But um, I always wanted to build something that would bring people that are like-minded. And that's always the experience that we've had with this because uh, we, we all converged first as, you know, family and friends on the way that we live our lives. And then it's, it was imbuing that into the business, into the brand. Yeah, I love that. The authenticity part is so important. Um, I think there's it's everything. This, it's everything yeah, for us. It is. Yeah. And I think there's always a desire up front to try and get someplace faster. And so pretending to be something or putting something other that's not really you 
sometimes feels appealing because you want to get to the end result faster, but then that end result is so much harder to maintain because you're not being yourself. And so, you know, we early on when, when we started our business, um, we had a lot of, a lot of conversations about, you know, how we were going to present ourselves, what we were going to do. And just yesterday, somebody had asked me the question, if I am um, like, do you, do you guys curse on your podcast? And <laughs> We don't. I would. I mean, if if guests want to, I mean, we would ask that you say the ones that are you know we've, less. We've had one one slip by that I realized. Well, was it me? It's no. like, <laughs> well, it's like if if that's the person, it's like you know if 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 they're authentic in their you know cursing and that's who they are, and you know it it, I think sometimes people craft you know who they are depending on who they're talking to and I, you know i get it that's fine like you know if, you, if that's what you need to do to find success but for me it was always i just want to be who i am and allow that to attract you know uh people into the business and um you know real quick you know we've connected through you know a fellow entrepreneur group and i had the opportunity to be on uh one of one of their podcasts a few years back and we talked about dapper effects and at the time we were doing a lot of business on amazon and for us, that was the, that was the topic that we talked about on the show. And I guess this is going back late 2018. And that was one of the biggest pivots we ever made after uh, we had this discussion with Andy was getting away from Amazon, adjusting and making a huge, huge shift. And that's what we did with Dapper Effects. We pulled our business 100% out of Amazon. We were making money. We were growing. We were growing a business, but we realized that we wanted to have 100% ownership of our business, of our brand. Yeah. And that decision, yeah, it's, it's going to set us back years probably, but it's, it's allowing us to build and do it the way that we want to do it. And we're blessed obviously in that all of us are in our, in our respective careers. So we're able to uh, take our, our, our conjointed resources and pour them into dapper effects and build this business that, you know, is really our, is going to, we want it to be our legacy. So it's going to be a, a it's a slow, long build for us. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I think we're hitting kind of on a point that I think that, I mean, everybody in, in everybody in the world, especially this country can, um, should, you know, kind of take heed that, I mean, it's just about self-respect really. Like it, like you say the word chivalry and, everybody gets probably a different definition, like a different picture in their head of what that means. Right. But like, ultimately it's, it's just being respectful. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to take my cape off and throw it in the puddle so that, you know, whatever. It's just, just don't be a jerk. You know, you know, Corey, like it, it bothers me so much, you know, what's going on right now. Like wh whatever side you're on politically, like at the end of the day, like what happened to respecting one another, one another, what happened to, you know, uh, helping somebody that can't walk through the door at the supermarket. So you let them through, like what happened to having on, honest conversation when you did when your opinions differ. Right. Um, so that that's something that we have always you know, stood by and will continue to stand by and want, we want our brand to be uh, a brand that stands by that because more than ever in this, this world, this crazy world that we're living in, we need, people need resources that uh, will lift them up. People need resources that are going to help them feel more connected with their communities, with their friends, with their family. And that's definitely what Dapper Effect stands for. Have you, like, do you do community outreach or, or anything like that? Cause I feel like this is something that you could as a part absolutely. of the brand. Yeah, absolutely. We were very heavily uh, become, we were getting heavily involved with uh, our local communities here actually in Long Island uh, in 2019, but obviously, uh, you know, the pandemic hit and that's been a, it's been a, it's been a tough, it's tough when you have a business that's brick and mortar and online and you're trying to push it out in the community and, and connect it with people, um, when you really can't connect anywhere. Um, so that's been definitely a pain point for us and we've been working through that. Um, but for us, we, we just, we're doubling down on our messaging, doubling down on the content that we're putting out and, sharing that too locally, but obviously it may be more shared locally through digital resources right now, whether it's Facebook groups or online or, um, you know, small like digital meetups, but, um, yeah, we're definitely looking to get back into that. We had this whole plan to do this amazing, uh, we we're going to be in this, uh, it was a St. Patty's day parade last year. Um, there was over 50,000 people that had showed up the year prior and, and it was a, a small town in Long Island. 
And uh, it was such a shame, you know, with everything shut down, that was a, that was going to be a big thing um, where, I mean, everybody was, doesn't, doesn't, didn't matter what side you stood on. Everybody was uh, in, in unity, you know, whether it was, it was the uh, community, it was the citizens, it was the police department, it was the fire department, it was um, small businesses, uh, you know, you name it, black, white, gay, straight, like it didn't matter. Everyone was there to support this, even if you weren't Irish. It was one of the most amazing things that uh, I was a part of in, in, our, in our local community. And we're just looking forward, you know, to getting back to that. And uh, we're going to continue to use our business to, to help bridge that for people that, that follow us. I, I love that. This has um, been such an interesting conversation. We could go on for hours, but unfortunately we have to um, start to wrap up. I did want to say that I just, I, I love what you're doing with this brand and how you're being so authentic. And um, can you, you tell our listeners how they can find you guys? Sure. So you guys can find us at dappereffects.com. That's effects with an E. And you can also follow us on Instagram, dapper underscore effects. Great. Thank you so much for being on our show today. And thank you to our listeners. You can find all of Dr. Tom's information in the show notes. You can connect with us on social media on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And reach out to us via our website, sbpace.com and bizquickpodcast.com. Yes. And you can subscribe to our podcast. Um, we are we are everywhere you listen to podcasts except iHeartRadio. And while you're out there, like us and give us a review. We love feedback. And reach yes. out to us about a re review, guys. That's important. Yes, yes, thank yes you. it is. <laughs> um, reach out to us about any topics you might have. Uh, let us know what you want to want to hear about, or if you want to be a guest. And go buy our book. We got a bestseller on Amazon. Uh, so the book's there and we've got an accompanying workbook that you can download from our website. Yes, buy the book. And rate and review that as well because those reviews are important. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.